Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki, and in this video, I'm in my buddy Brad from Fix This Build That Shop in Nashville, Tennessee. We built these awesome cornhole boards behind me, and with the cutoffs, I made this redneck golf. Check it out. So real quick before we get into the build, I want to tell you a bit about my podcast with my buddy Brad here. It's called Made for Profit, where we talk business in the shop and help you monetize as a maker. If you're interested in our podcast, we have links in the description below, and we talk a bit more about it at the end of this episode. Now, let's get to the build. This build starts off like most by breaking down the lumber and cutting the joinery. For this build, I'm using lap joints for the main structure. I'll cut the lap into the base part using the table saw and a crosscut sled. Take some slow passes, and then I knock out the waste after. So when I asked Brad for a hammer, he handed me this little guy and said it doesn't get much attention. So we put it to work. Wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, but it made for some good video. We then beef it up a bit with a little bit bigger hammer for the second go around and it makes much faster work. Note to self, don't trust Brad or tiny hammer. I then move on to cutting the riser blocks for the feet on the table saw. I go ahead and countersink these and attach them with glue and screws. I then mark the angles for the taper on the edges and I cut those on the bandsaw. While the glue sets up a bit, I move on to drilling the golf balls. I make a little jig with a force in a bit and I cut it in half in order to clamp the ball in place. And then I use a quarter inch drill bit on the drill press to drill through. Now we're using some used golf balls here and some of them had some surprises in them, as you can see. So take your time when drilling through these because they might explode. Here I make a mistake of gluing the golf balls to a piece of cardboard in order to prep them for spray paint. I would not advocate on doing this at all. They were a pain to get off of the paper. So while the balls dry, we move back to the build, and I cut the dowels to width as well as all of the holes for their mounting on all of the vertical risers. These are all mounted center and 13 inches apart from each other, and if you're interested in making this build, we do have a free plan available in the description for this and for the cornhole boards that we built together. Now back to the build, Brad's tapering the verticals on his tapering jig and then countersinking all of the mounting holes for the verticals to the bases. We then move on to rounding over the edges everywhere except for where the joints will meet. We give it a light sanding to 120 grit and then begin the assembly process. We use glue and screws just to mount the feet to the risers and that's about it. A nice tight fit on the lap joint makes for a nice strong joint. I add a little bit of glue to each Forstner hole and then I add the dowel. I clamp these together using my body weight because I have a lot of it. And then we throw it in some clamps and while it dries up I actually begin the threading of the golf balls. The golf balls have to be 13 inches apart in the center and that's about the only measurement you need. I use paracord, I burn the edges and then we get the plan. So I want to send a huge thank you out there to my buddy Brad for having me down in the shop. Like I said at the top of the video, we have a podcast called Made for Profit where we help people like yourselves monetize as a maker. Absolutely, guys. We have weekly episodes where we talk about hot business topics as well as we interview some of the great people that are winning in our space. You guys should definitely check out Brad's channel. He's got a ton of awesome builds on there and some really sweet stuff to help you become a better woodworker. Also want to send a big thank you out to Timberland Pro for sponsoring this build. We've got plans available for free if you want to build both of these projects. Like I said, we built these both from two 2x10s two and some extra scraps and parts that you can get in the cut list that comes with the plans. 
One more time, I want to send a big thank you out to Brad and to you guys for tuning in. And I'll go punch your next project in the face, and I'll see you on the next video.